Hey guys, it's All Things Disney, and today I'm back to show you how to create this cute little Pluto charm on your rainbow loom. Um, Pluto is part of my Tidbits collection, and you may all know already that last year, if you have, like, seen my videos from last year, you would know that I did make a Pluto last year, um, which is pretty similar to this, but not exactly the same. I used a little bit of different techniques, so you could consider him a new and improved Pluto. Um, and I wanted to make him part of the Tidbit series, which are the new ones I've been making. Um, and he's still cute. I changed the ears, the tail, and the body size a little bit. Um, and he stands up, so he's kind of 3D-ish, if you would consider him that. So as you can see, he looks like that when he's standing up from the side. You can't really see it well right now. Um, but, and the reason I made Pluto is because his 85th birthday is on September 5th, 2015, and that's this year, so, um, it might, you might not be watching this near the birthday time, but I wanted to make a charm for him in memory of his birthday, or the, um, actually day he was first created, or when Disney Studios created him, and he's such a cute character and lovable, and how could you not love Pluto? I also made a charm for Donald a while back, um, when it was his birthday back in June. I believe it was June 8th, but I'm not really sure. Um, so I did make a Donald a while back, and I plan on making a Mickey on his birthday and maybe a Minnie as well. I believe those are in February, but I'm not sure. And Goofy as well, so I can make some more Fab Five characters. Um, but either way, today I'll be showing you how to make Pluto. And he is an original design. So let's get started with the supplies you'll need. So the supplies you'll need to create Pluto are one rainbow loom set up in the staggered configuration with the red arrow facing down or towards you, then one rainbow loom hook, as you can see here I'm using the metal tip hook, and then you'll be needing three rainbow loom rubber band colors. So you're going to need about 13 black bands for the facial features which are the eyes and the nose and the ears and the tail. So you'll be needing that many for the, um, and then you'll need one green band for the collar around his neck. So I'm using the Sweets 2D Fruity Mix Green, or the darker shade of green from the collection. But you can really use any other shade of green. I just had these lying around, so I decided to use that. Um, you will also be needing about 44 orange bands. Here, as you can see, I use neon orange bands. Um, but today I'm going to be trying out jelly gold bands because they're kind of similar and I just wanted to see how they would look. So we'll see in the end about those. You can also use, if you don't have jelly gold or neon orange, and this is not the neon orange from the Michaels store. This is the neon orange from the Rainbow Loom website. Um, just so you know. Because they're different, even though they're called the same thing. Um, but this is neon orange from Rainbow Loom and it looks like this. You can also use yellow. Um, mango, I think mango would look good, or you can also use orange, but that's a little darker, so that's only if you don't have any of them, but otherwise you can use yellow, gold, any shade that is kind of orangey, yellowish. So now you can grab your supplies and we can get started with the tutorial. So we're going to start with your loom set up in the staggered configuration with the red arrow facing towards you, and you're going to take one of your orange colored bands or skin colored bands and go down from the top center peg to the one underneath it. Then we're going to take doubles of the orange bands and go diagonally from the center to the left side. Then go diagonally to, from the center to the, to the right side and then go down once on each side still using double of the same orange bands. Like that. In the center we're going to go down twice with double bands. So once and twice, and then on each side we're going to grab double bands and go diagonally from the left side in to the center and the right side into the center, which will close off the face. Then you're going to take another double like that of the same color and go down once in the center, so that'll create the neck. So now before we continue on, let's make the ears. So I'm going to take out my hook and we're going to do the same thing twice, so I'll just show you that. So we're going to start by twisting one black band around the tip of your hook three times, creating four loops. 
Then we're going to take one black band, double it over once in your fingers, place it on the tip of your hook, and then slide on the loops. Like that. Then we're going to do another length. So grab another black band, double it over once in your fingers, place it on the tip of your hook, pull through the loops, and then bring both ends back over. Like that. So now we have our two lengths and our cap band. So you can add on one more length, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so then you can just kind of stretch this. I'm trying to get this onto my fingers. Okay. Like that, and then you can just place it down. So I just put one finger in it and one... Um, one up my hook so that I can kind of stretch it and place it down. So you're going to want to place it down on the second peg down from the top on the left side and then the same on the right side. So we're going to do the same again. So take another black band, twist around the tip of your hook three times creating four loops. Then we're going to take two bands one at a time, twist one around your fingers once, then place it on the tip of your hook, slide on the loops, bring both ends back over, and then grab your other band, double it over once, grab both ends, and then before I'm, I'm going to reclaim it, I think I'm just going to stretch it onto that peg. So first I'm going to put that one row, and then the ones in my fingers I'm going to grab with my hook and put over. Just because it's a little easier to get on, um, because once it's on the loom it's easier, but getting it onto the loom is a little hard to stretch it, because the bands are so tight. Okay, so before we move down to the body, I just want to get all the facial details done, ex excluding the nose. But we are going to do the eyes right now, so take another black band, twist around the tip of your hook four times, no, three times, creating four loops. Then do the same with another band, like that. So now you have these two lines, not lines, circles or loops on your hook, and then we're going to take one orange band, place it on the tip of your hook, slide on all the loops like that and then stretch this band from the third peg down from the top on the left side to the third peg down from the top on the right side then you can separate the eyes with your fingers or your hook and then with your hook or fingers go in and grab the top part of the band and bring it up to the center peg which will separate the eyes like so so now we have that completed and we're going to move down to the body So. We're going to take double orange bands and go diagonally to the left side, then go diagonally to the right side, then we're going to go down twice on each side. Since I made Pluto a little smaller than the other characters, he is smaller on the loom. Like, as you can see here, Donald is a little longer. If you put his Pluto's body bottom part right there, he is a little smaller. Um, and I also did that for my Rocket Raccoon, um, which is part of my Marvel collection. So you can check him out, but um, back on track. Um, so he's a little smaller, so we're only going down two times on each side. Because I wanted him to look a little smaller since he's a dog. So he's a little smaller than the other characters. So then in the center, we're only going to go down once. But that one time, we're going to add on the tail as well. So we're going to start with your hook, and we're going to make the tail first. So twist one black band around the tip of your hook four times, creating three loops. Then here we are going to double this one black band over your fingers three times. So actually two times creating three loops, but it is kind of three times. So since it's going to need to be stretched a lot, I'm just going to stretch it out in my fingers and then loop once and then loop again, which will be kind of tight, but you just want to get it right onto your hook and slide on the loops immediately. Like that. Then we're going to bring both ends back over. This will create that tight look for his tail. And then we're going to do that two more times. So stretch another band out, and then twist it around two times in your fingers. Place it on the tip of your hook, slide on all the loops, and then bring both ends back over. Like that. Then one more time, we're just going to take another, stretch it out then twist around your fingers two times, creating three loops, and then pull it through and bring it back over. Like that. So now we have this super tight look for the tail, because his tail is, like, really tight. So um, I just wanted to make it look really tight, and that is a little tricky, because usually you want to twist the bands around three times. Um, but 
So now you have your tail on your hook like this. So we have one cap band and then we have our three twisted band loops. So now you're going to take double orange bands, place them on the tip of your hook, pull them through the tail like that, and just leave the tail in the middle and then we're going to place this down right in the center where we would place our normal pair of double bands. So it's pretty much like we're just ignoring the tail and it's just a normal pair of double bands. So then you can just push the tail to the back side like that and then we have our completed body. So now we're just going to add on the arms and the triangle bands and then we'll be done. So we're going to start with the arms. So take one orange band, twist around the tip of your hook two times creating three loops. Then grab double bands, place them on the tip of your hook, slide on the loops, bring both ends back over like that. Then take this onto your fingers and place it down on the fifth peg down from the top on the left side. Then we're going to repeat this for the other side, so twist another band around the tip of your hook, um, two times creating three loops, then grab double bands, place them on the tip of your hook, slide on the loops, and bring them back over. Then take this back onto your fingers, place this down on the other side like that, and then we can continue on. So now we have done our arms and all of our body parts except for our cap bands. And of course our nose, which we're going to add on later, and our collar, which we're going to add on later as well. Um, but we haven't done our horizontal bands yet either. So we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to make some cap bands. So you're going to start with one cap band and twist around the tip of your hook. Not tip of your hook, oh, I'm so used to saying that. Um, twist around your loom, the bottom peg, two times creating three loops. As you can see right here, it should look like this. So just put it right over there. So then we're going to do the same for the other side. So just take another band and twist it over two times, creating three loops, like that. And then with one more band, we're going to make a triangle right on the body in the only place you could make a triangle. Then bring the bottom part of the triangle up like that. And let me cut. Okay. So now your loom should look like this. So we don't have our collar, collar or our nose there just yet, um, but we definitely will add those on. So... You can see we have all of this done right now. So now we can get on to the hooking process. So once you make sure your loom looks like this, just another quick review. Um, we're going to start with your hooks and we're going to start in the middle. So just grab the bottom two and bring them up. Simple as that, there's nothing else to do in the middle. So just end right there. You're pretty much ignoring the tail, just pretend it's not even there. So then we're going to grab the, um, go in the cap band on the sides, grab the bottom two and bring them up. Then go under the triangle band. Let me fix this twisted band first. Okay, so then go under the triangle band, grab the bottom two as well, bring them up to the next peg, then go under the arm bands, grab it the bottom two and bring them diagonally in, like that. Then on the other side, we're going to go under the cap band, grab the bottom two and bring them up, then go under the triangle band, bring the bottom two up, and then go under the arms and bring the bottom two up, or in, I should say. So now, your Pluto should look like this. So, I really love that his body is so small, it's so simple, and requires less bands. So now we're going to hook up the neck. So go under everything in the center and just grab those bottom two bands that are going upwards, and hook them up. Then we're going to grab the next top two only. So there should be quite a few bands there, but just grab the top two, bring them to the side where they go, then grab the next top two, bring them to the side where they go, and then before we hook up the middle ones, we're going to add on the nose. So just take one black band, twist it around the tip of your hook three times, creating four loops. Then we're just going to leave it there. Just hook up the bands, but before placing them down, just slide on the loops. Like that. So now it should look like this. So then you're just going to bring the band up like that. And then we're going to go in the center again, bring the next two up, like that. So then on each side, we're going to go under, grab only the bottom two, bring them up. Then when you reach where the ears are, you can pull them out, grab only the bottom two, bring them diagonally in, then do the same on the other side. So go under, bottom two up, under the ears, bottom two only, bring them diagonally in, and then we have this. So now your loom should look like this. And we're just going to hook up that last band. So bring that up. And then we have our completed Pluto, except he's not off the loom yet. So pretty almost completed.
Pluto. So then, then from the outside, we're going to grab the bottom part of the band, bring it up and over the peg like that, and then just pull on it to tighten it. Then we're going to start at the bottom and just take him off the loom. Like that. So now let me move my loom out of the way and then you have your hook and you just need to do some adjusting now. Um, we will need to do, like I just said, some adjusting and just some finishing details. So with the tail you want to make sure that it's pointing upward or to the back side, upward, like that. You can leave your Pluto like this but I think he looks better with his head up so he looks like an actual dog and he's kind of 3D-ish so I just think that's really cool as well. So then just bring your tail up a little bit if it's not already. You can kind of tilt the arms and legs downward like that and then first I'm going to hide the slip knot band. You don't have to if you don't want to but I'm just going to go through the back side, grab it with my hook one that one slip knot band to pull it through. Then if I want to, which you could just go through some more bands and pull it through as well so that it's completely hidden. So then you're going to position the head up and I like to grab the neck bands and then just pull them to the side so that the head kind of points upwards. So then you can just adjust everything and then continue and then we just have to of course put his collar otherwise he's just pretty much a dog because right now he doesn't look much like Pluto. The really the collar is the finishing detail. So you're gonna take that br um that brown, that green band, and then pull it over his head, head and onto his neck, and then just double it around once, like that. And then we have his collar, like that. So now he is completely done, and he looks like this. And you can continue ad to adjust him. I kind of like him. His ears are pointed down, but you can point one up and one down, or two d up, or whatever you like. You can continue to stretch out the face. You can keep positioning the legs a little bit down more. Um, stretch out the neck. Make sure the tail is pointing upwards so that when you're looking at him, the tail is up. And then just keep working on him and like squishing him or just kind of like helping him until he can stand on his own. So his head is a little heavy, so it'll be a little odd and a little hard to stand up, but he will do it if you um, just make sure you're finished with the details and make sure that you just keep adjusting and then he should stand. So he's really cute and I really love how he came out. And he's just such a fun little dog and he's so cute and I love that he can stand up so he's the second character I've made of the Fab Five, so I'm hoping to make the others. Um, I don't know if there will be any time soon, but I know that I will be doing some Halloween characters soon. But I just wanted to get Pluto in because his birthday is coming up. Or, yeah, well, at the time I'm filming this, his birthday is coming up. And I just wanted to celebrate, kind of. It's not really a celebration, but it is in honor of Pluto's birthday because he is like the most lovable dog around in at least the Disney universe. Um, so thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.